It's the end of the season and you know you've got to rebuild that squad. And here, today, is how I go about rebuilding my squads. Right then, so a little bit of background. This is Anderlecht. Now, I'm doing a bit of a save of Anderlecht over on Twitch. We've just had our first season and it was pretty damn good, quite successful. We won the league after that crazy playoffs that they do over in Belgium. The full league table is there and you can see successful season. But... It's the end of the season and we've got lots of players that we might need to replace. There's the squad and you can see there's three players in blue there, obviously meaning that they are in on loan. Now, does that mean I'm going to lose them? In some cases it does and they're going to need to be replaced. The likes of Conte Sao, who I've had in from Ajax, he's had a cracking season with 10 assists and I do have an option to buy him. However, we are Anderlecht and the option to buy him is for 22.5 million and we just can't afford that. So not only the lone players, but think about this. We've just won the Belgian League for the first time in God knows how many years for Anderlecht. And that means we're going to be in the Champions League, potentially. So we're going to need to improve areas too. So we're going to go through it step by step on how I rebuild. But I'm interested in how you guys rebuild as well. So pop it in the comments below. You're going to have different techniques to me. So let's learn together. Now we really need to get prepping because as I said, we've got the Champions League challenge this season. Worst case scenario, we've got the Europa League challenge. So we need to step up. Okay, step one. Now you can see the team there, the formation. Now there will be a formation video, tactic video on my own channel about this because it's been a bit of a ride. But for now, let's take a little look. So you can see I've got all my players there. They've worked really well together. You can see the combination plays have been beautiful, but I am losing some of these players. Now, unfortunately, the first one I'm losing is Fabio Silva. He's on loan from Wolves. He's scored 32 times this season, 27 in 34 in the league, but it's only a loan and they're taking him back. So what I need to do straight away is take him out of this position. Now I know that I need to replace that man, so I do not forget it's logged in there. Fabio's gonna be gone. Same got to be said for Conte Sal. He's also going like we discussed earlier. So instantly I've got two positions that I'm gonna need to fill. So having gone through the first 11, I can see that I've got four gaps for the first 11 that we'll need. And on my subs bench, I've got 10 players that I'm happy with. I want two players per position, so a couple more in there and I'll be good to go. And again, the main reason I do this is so I stay on track and I don't try and buy 25 right wing backs just because they're there. So next up, we're going to have a look at the Youth Development Centre and who is ready to step up. Now, this is twofold. Anderlecht don't have the most money in the world, so it's going to come in handy to save a bit of money. And we've got an excellent Youth Academy, so it could be time to move them on up. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a B team as well as an under-18 team, you're laughing, you're going to have a good choice of a bunch of players. We're going to start with our future prospects, ingeniously entitled Anderlecht Futures. Now, I've been keeping an eye on this all season. It's the main reason I wanted to make this a long-term save because they have got an excellent, excellent bunch of players back here. And now I know that I've got some players who are ready to jump up to that first team and they're going to save me some money. It's why it's important always to have a little look at your B teams and your reserve teams and see what's going on there. Sometimes you forget, but a player like Tristan De Grief, he's going to be moving up next season. A six-foot attacking midfielder. Look at that quality he's going to be have. 18 years old as well. He's ready to move on up. He's going to save me some money. I've already now got my backup attacking midfielder. So you can use this screen to have a good look around, see which players have had a good season in your B team. You can see you've got a few players here who've really stood out, such as Lucas Stassin, who is a striker. And again, he's 18. And think about it. Am I going to get a better backup striker than this kid as he develops as well at the same time? He's ideal. So just like the last player, he'll begin moving on up to that first team squad. By looking at that youth team squad, we've started to achieve our goal of having two players per position. You can see in substitute positions 10, 11, 12 and 13, these have all been promoted from the youth team. We'll keep them playing the youth team, get them 90 minutes, but they're going to be valuable additions to my squad. Now step three is probably the easiest of the bunch. It's your budget and assessing it. And then once you know what it is, you can then plan the way you're going to do it. Now. That's probably why I showed you the first two first because getting the youth development team up is going to be vital if you've got a transfer budget like that. Three million is not going to get as far. So we're going to have to then use loans, free transfers and our youth team to bulk up that squad. So now I can set recruitment focuses based on that, based on loans, based on the fact that I've got hardly any money and then I won't get chucked suggestions like X, Y and Z player that are worth 15 to 20 million. Same gig for free transfers, I'll just line up a recruitment focus, get some free transfer shortlist built, and the temptation to blow my budget on one player, hopefully, will be controlled. So once we've got those basics that I like to do, I then delve a bit deeper. Now, we've had a successful season, but there's been a few issues. 
Now, with a tactic like that, you are going to be somewhat open. We've got four attacking players, basically, in that big strata up front. So we're going to have a few defensive issues. But this season, as I look at the league, there was a few too many issues. You can see we scored a massive 81 goals in our 34 games. But we also conceded 43, which is the worst defensive record from the top 12 teams. So it's a good job we were scoring. So how can we improve? And for that, I go to the data hub and have a little look on some of the key metrics from defending. Now, if I have a look here on defending overall, we can see we're not performing disastrously, but we're not performing great either. Remember, we won the league, but we are marooned over here. This one's more worrying, the tackling. You can see we've got fewer tackles and poor tackling. Now, I'm not too concerned about the fewer tackles because we do dominate the ball quite a lot, but the poor tackling is a bit of an issue. Now, it's a similar story on possession gain. I feel we can be a bit more effective. We're winning the ball back in the right areas, right where the defensive midfielders are, but we're not doing it enough. Again, that might affect the way I look at things. So then I come back to my formation, and I think these guys here are in charge of winning the ball back and laying it onto the guys in front, because Julie here is doing a great job as a ball winning midfielder. But maybe, just maybe, the register role is not the one I need. Maybe I can use that data hub, change that role, and in turn, change the way I look for players. Now, if I've got a register role, I need to see him with assists and key passes and key from open play. So then we dive into that stat. So this is the open play key passes metric. So that's key passes taken away set pieces, which can warp some people's stats. Now, if I look at it, I can see Yariv Sharon's up there. He was my top assist maker. Great. Marilio here is my right back, right wing back. He's going to be involved. And Conce Sao and Fabio Silva. I see absolutely no sign of my register. It's the same story in chances created metric and expected assists. My register, although getting the ball and giving it and working it really nicely, is probably not needed. This is amplified even further by checking out my ball win midfielder, Gajula. There he is, quite high up. He's one of the top progressive passive makers in the league. In fact, he's higher up than the two guys I've been using as registers recently. Michael Kerner there, and over here is Noah Siddiqui, both young, but they're not doing as much as Klaus is, even though they're registers and he's a ball winning midfielder. So using the data hub and the player stats screen, I can now see that if I want to rebuild this team for next season and possibly shore it up a bit, this role right here, we can probably change it to a more defensive base role. Even though you win the league, there's always ways to improve. And that has shown me that especially in big games like Champions League matches, maybe I can dump the register and bring in a more defensive minded player. Thank you, Data Hub. Now we can then build upon that Data Hub knowledge and I hope you can see why it's a step-by-step -step process. So using Data Hub, I'm going to use the chalkboard as well. If I look at Conte Sao, who we are losing at the end of the season, one of my prime creative assets. Having a look at this little graph here, you can see his key passes per 90 minutes are at 2.24 and his progressive passes are 4.26, both way above the league average. So we're losing him, so we try to clone him with a player who's performed similar to he has. So we can see we've loaded in onto the chalkboard, progressive passes per 90 and key passes per 90 at a level close to what he was doing. Once we press OK, we can see that the player pool has been limited down here now. So maybe 20 or so players there, including some free transfers as well. So now we've got a bunch of players we can look through who can potentially replace him. That is another good tool. You're going to find a player who you now know is capable of doing the things your outgoing player is doing. It'll be at a different level, so you need to match the player up as best you can, but it's definitely another option and possibly a cheaper version too. The final step I like to go through, and it's a bit of a cheeky one. Some would say it's a lazy one, but we need to replace a player and say you need to do it quickly. Fabio, 31 goals in 40 matches. My guy, what a player. We can't afford him, look at his value. So we need to get the next best thing. Now, if you don't want to use chalkboard, you don't want to go in that depth, you don't want to look through stats, you want to use old school ways and attribute analysis, this is the best way. I know my man Fabio is perfect for us, so I want someone who's as close to him as we can get. We're going to go to find a similar player. So we go up to here and we type in our boy Fabio Silva, if I can spell it right. And there he is. The game throws up his favourite role, advanced forward, and his key attributes for that role. Now, if your player is not an advanced forward, like I am playing advanced forward, so it's ideal, but you can change that simply by using the drop down. Now, we've got the key attributes for Mr. Silva, and over here, we've got a list of players that match it. Now, these players are the ideal ones to replace Fabio Silva, but as you can see, 
that may be a bit out of our reach. We've got the likes of Shao Felix, Benzema, Sadio Mane. Now, I love Anderlecht, but we ain't going to get these players. So you can doctor them slightly, drop them all by one, and then you're going to get some more players, a bigger pool, some more realistic type of signings, such as players as low down as 800,000, for example. He could be a little cheeky one, Hayashi there. So then you're going to get a load of players that closely match Fabio Silva. Basically, dudes, it's the lazy way of doing it. As a spoiler, I am highly considering signing Delefeo from Udinese to replace Silva. And there you have it, crew. Those are my little steps I like to take to rebuild my squad. Now, like I said at the start, do tell me yours as well. Give me some ideas.